is my state, this is my team. You know what that means. This is for the black and blue that I bleed. This is for the chance to bring home that ring. But everybody gonna doubt this. So far, there ain't been another way around it. We bring heat to the game each week. They just say we ain't got what it takes. We ain't about it. About it. Well, y'all can just keep saying that we ain't gonna make it. But at the end of the day, this will be the Panthers nation. You know, this ain't a game to us major players at every angle that you can think of. That's why you hate us. Get out the way of greatness. You can look at our faces and see the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to create this. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, but you can save it. Cause even on the darkest of days, you know we're always gonna find a way to. Tell them what we gon' do, we gotta all right what's good people shout out to the loyal listeners out there it's already already people loading up <sighs> what a week what a week what a week man what a week what a week so um we just, we just gonna get it cracking man listen y'all know who it is it's rashad and i'm david man which how you guys doing man how y'all doing during the herney era Yo, Herney's back. Herney is back. Just, I guess we kind of called it. Did we call it? Did we kind of call it? I did. I guess somebody I said called reports it. was out that Herney's going to be the next guy. So yeah. Yeah. So well, um, yeah. yeah. Let's get it cracking, man. Let's 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 dive right in, man. No no need to waste any time. I think we got a pretty low of the show. Um, so we uh we gonna we gonna jump right into it. So the the, the Marty Herney area era, excuse me, is back um what what's your what's your initial thoughts initial thoughts off the dome when you when you heard the news what what were what were you uh what were you thinking i thought that's pretty much the only guy you could put in at this point i mean they they got rid of their hair apparent they got rid of uh well they didn't get rid of the hair apparent they let him walk to buffalo they decided to uh they decided oh you know, Ernie's the perfect guy to come in for, on an interim basis but my fear right now is that it's not going to be an interim basis this is darn sure not looking interim <laughs> to me uh he he looks like it's a full go right now like uh I, I took some time to uh watch the press conference and uh he made it very he made it very uh clear that it was interim but it it seemed like it was kind of forced to to make sure that you that you knew it was an interim basis. Yeah. So it, it, to me, it, that kind of says, hey, uh, probably going to be a full-time guy, but we don't want anybody to know yet. Um, but my initial thoughts were, was like, man, like in this in this scenario, like you just said, in, in, as late as it is in the game, um, he is pretty much the only person you could bring in at this point. Um, he has experience. Hell, he drafted half the people on the team. Um, so it's a, it's a familiar face, and like like we always say, um, you know, continuity uh, brings it breeds success. So you got to have that uh, familiar face in the building. So um, it, I was pissed at first that they even got rid of Gettleman, um, but I can't say that I'm. I know last episode I was pretty hard on Herney, um, pause, but um, I, I just I, I took some time, did a little bit of research. And I, I'm not I'm not as mad about it. I think it's I'm okay with the Herney even going forward, um, because if you look at his press or you listen to his press press conference, he admittedly said he he made um, a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, he said uh, he said a couple things. One thing he said, what he say? I um, I took it. He said um, he realized he made his mistakes, and he quote made sure he said this is what he said quotes make he needs to make sure that the analytical part of his brain uh takes over the emotional part of his brain and when he said that i was like okay uh he he, he um he's starting to um recognize the uh mistakes of the past and so i'm i'm kind of okay with it i think i'm i'm okay with it even even if it was a full-time basis or it transitioned to full-time i think i'm okay with it mm. what, what do you think mm. Full time, I'm not. I'm not ready yet, man. I'm not. I'm not ready. I gotta see how this goes. I'm not ready. I understand. He said that he learned from his mistakes. I get all that, but I don't think I'm ready to see him full time yet. I'm not. I'm not convinced. After a week, I'm not. Not yet. 
Okay, so so let's let's take a look at some of the good. Let's take some of the goods, the positives um, that uh, that get them. That, I'm so, excuse me, Herney has done uh, for the Panthers. Um, you know, I mean, he literally drafted your top ten, did he not? Yeah, he dropped a lot I of mean, good guys. Like no, he, he he drafted some Hall of Famers, man. He did, he did, but he also drafted some never famous. A lot of them too. Yeah, no, he did. It got real shaky. It got real shaky in two thousand eight. But we're we're gonna stay positive for this portion of the show. That's fine. The good. Let's let's talk all about right. the good. We'll, we'll this talk. portion. We'll get to the bad. We'll get to the bad. But let's all talk right. about the good. Okay. Just the positive right now. He did so, hire. I mean, he, he, he hired Ron. Yeah. He hired Rivera. He hired Fox. And you know, you know, some people have their ways about Fox. He hired Fox. He hired Rivera. Both coaches got to a Super Bowl. So you got to give him some credit for that. Um, like you said, he hired a lot of good draft picks. He hired, he hired. I mean, he drafted Luke. He drafted Cam. So yeah, he drafted Peppers. He drafted Pep. He drafted Jordan Gross. He drafted Chris Gamble. He drafted Thomas Davis. He drafted D'Angelo Williams. He drafted John and Beeson. Still, and he still. drafted Ryan Khalil. He drafted Jonathan Stewart. Uh, the list goes on with the dude. It got shaky in two thousand eight, around two thousand eight. He it, it it got that's that was um that was the this. I mean, he actually had a decent draft. Two thousand eight was good, but he made some he made some critical critical mistakes in that draft. But we'll get to that. But I mean that he the dude drafted some. He drafted really well, and I and I I made a comment last um last show about. You know who drafted better than David Gellum? Who's you know, and clearly, clearly, it's not even close that Marty Herney is a better drafter than David Gellum, at least for the first half. The the 2002 to 2000, his first four years or his first four years were better than than Gettleman's four years. It's facts. But, but you, but you can argue. That even stay like, positive, Dave. We I'm on the good. Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay I'm positive. To, I want to say, but when you say something like that, man, that's why that you're 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 baiting me, and I don't appreciate all this baiting you're giving me right now. I'm yeah, you got to stay I, positive, right? Now. I don't agree with your sentiment that that Herney was a better draft than Gettleman. I'm I gonna, think he is. I think it's it's by far. It's it's not even close. Oh nah. Nah, I ain't ready for it's that. not even close, man. Trust me, it's I not think even now, close. I think now it might be more about the scout team at this point. If we're gonna say that, it's not even close. Like I, I looked at it, and actually, I'm gonna shout out to um, uh, a cat scratch reader. Um, they have a great article on their website, and they they compared the first four years um of the different GMs that we had, and Marty Herney is wait, it's not even close. His first round picks. Are great. Like his first round picks are all yeah. all gonna be Hall of Famers. Yeah, his first, his first round, round pick. Pick, his first round picks. I mean, knocked it out the park. Like it's not even close. Like it's not close, even close. Luke Keekley, Cam Newton, Peppers. It's not even close, dude. He made some mistakes. That. He's not perfect. It, it it's not perfect by any means. I've never said it's perfect. But I will admit that I was wrong about Dave Gettleman, and I overhyped his draft. His draft success. It's not even close to Hernie's. Not even close. So we're staying positive, man. We about to get to the bad in a second. Oh, we about to get to the bad in a second. One, this is one. I'm say, do you do you have any do you have anything positive to say? What did they say? What's the saying? If you don't have anything good to say, <laughs> don't say it at all. And I'm a man. That that there is, isn't it? <laughs> nah, but nah, he. He had a he gave us a couple good winning seasons as as GM. He 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 took a deep he was behind a, the three playoff appearances for the Panthers. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny that. And the reality of the matter is Gettleman, when Gettleman was there, he 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 wrote off a lot of the guys that Herney brought in. He I'm not, absolutely I'm, I'm not denying Her, that. Herney dra- Herney drafted the core. Yes. Herney put the core together. Yes. To this day, the core still exists. Yep. And Gettleman, what Gettleman was great at was putting those little side pieces, putting the sprinkles on the top, bringing in those, bringing in your uh, your your Charles Tillmans, your your uh, Mike Mitchells, and your your um, 
your Kurt Coleman's, oh, those yeah. those kind of guys. Somebody in the he, chat said something. He traded but, for freaking Olsen. God, he traded yeah, for Olsen. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, yeah, great, great, uh, great point. Uh, he traded for Olsen. So, I mean, keep, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep the positive vibes flowing out here for Herney. Let's keep the positive vibes flowing a little bit. I like the positive vibes. So, he, um, he traded, so yeah. he traded, he traded away Chris Jenkins around the time when he was starting to do go on a decline. And he got some good value for him when we did that. So yeah, we're gonna muster up all this positive energy and and throw it at uh at Herney because I, I, I hey look man, I was admittedly I was a little hard on him. Uh, pause, but I think we're ready to transition to the bad right now. Let's let's get to we the bad. To. As, we need as to. To, can I start? Is, can I please? Go, can I please you go start? ahead. You, you take take the floor. <laughs> it's on you. Let's get to the bad. Let's get to the reason why um you know Herney got ousted and and needed to be replaced. You 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 have the floor, sir. At one point we had the two two of the top five highest paid running backs in the NFL because of contracts that he that he delivered to D'Angelo Williams I, and Jonathan Stewart. Can I interject? Oh, you you got the figures? Do, do I need to get oh, the God. figures? I got the figures yeah, right here for yeah, If you got the figures, so go ahead. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll add a little sprinkle to your, your sauce there. So D'Angelo Williams was given um, a five-year, $43 million deal worth $21 million guaranteed before the 2011 season. Uh, Jonathan Stewart was given – uh, the next year, 2012, before the 2012 season, Jonathan Stewart was given a six-year, $37.8 million uh, dollar extension uh, with $22.5 million in guaranteed money, a contract that kind of still exists in a way right now. Uh, but go ahead. Sorry. I just want to throw the figures no, out no, there. You're good. You're good. We got more. Um, we paid we paid Beeson all that money. Even though he was I, got I got you. I got you. I got you. John Beeson, a six-year, $51.3 million deal with $25 million guaranteed uh, in the uh, in the July of the 2011 season. Continue. So let's go back to the running back situation. Now, somebody in the chat pretty much said he should have picked Williams and Stewart, and that's how I felt back then when we made the decision to sign Williams. When we made the decision to pay Williams all that money, I didn't think Stu was an option. Stu shouldn't have been an option at all. We should have just said we're going to roll with Williams and we would let Stu walk. But instead, he made the decision to pay him. When we were starting, when the NFL was converting into a pass-first league, more of a pass-aggressive league, we signed two running backs and give them top five money. Um, so, if you want to go more with the the negatives, we could talk Keep about going, his Keep decisions with drafting. In, he would trade. He he had a habit of trading trading yeah. up and giving up so much. There was time. Let me, let me was, jump. In, let me jump in right there. Let me jump in right there. Um, in 2008, uh, Herney gave a, fir a first-round pick to uh, grab Jeff Ota. Um, he also traded uh, to he traded a first-round pick um, to get uh, he I'm so, excuse me uh, he drafted Jimmy Clausen, um, which cost us a 2010 first-round pick. Uh, Monty Edwards also cost us a 2011 second-round pick. Uh, continue to your points. And he drafted Jimmy Clausen. He drafted Jimmy Clausen <laughs> in, in the second round, but he traded up to get him. And he gave traded him. up to get him. And Amante Edwards was a huge fail, too. They tried, man. They gave Amante every opportunity in the world and just could, it didn't they stick. Were to, they were trying to make it so – because they traded up for him, if I remember correctly, right? You said it again? They traded up for him, right? Yeah, yeah they traded a, a second-round pick to get him. Yeah, so they traded up to get the guy. So I know they, their pride wasn't going to allow them to just admit failure. But yeah, they did everything they could to try to make Amati work, and they never did. Um, I don't think uh, he didn't really listen to to Fox at the time because I don't think Fox was interested. Oh, wait, wait! I'm speaking of Fox. We signed Jake DeLome after he had one of the worst games in NFL playoff history to an extension. Oh, the five year, I'm uh, um, the five, the five uh, interception spree. Yeah, six turnovers, five picks in a fumble. Terrible game. Yep. So right after that, we signed Jake DeLone to an extension. And he took a lot of heat for that. Initially, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, he never was the same. So, so do you remember uh, Orlando, Orlando Mari, the kicker we brought in? Yeah, $12 million, right? $12 million deal. Lasted, lasted one year. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, let's, I mean, we, we, we didn't talk about the biggest mistake you made. I will not mistake. I, I'm not gonna say mistake, but the biggest, uh, cost 
Um, oh, two Charles, guys. Six, yeah, Charles money. Johnson's deal. Big money. Uh, six, six years, $76 million deal um, that included $32 million in, in guaranteed money. Um, big, 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 big money. Um, we could talk about how Peppers got alienated at 1.2. Because he didn't want to come back and play. Because he didn't want to come back and play for the team. But I don't think they were interested in paying him what he wanted anyway. So they, so instead they give the money to Charles Johnson. Yep. T. So and then TD also TD got a, a thirty-six million dollar uh, deal um, in in uh, in July two thousand eleven. Spent yeah, a lot of money. Man. Yeah, but after that, you know when. TD was having the injury problems and he was tearing AC, when he kept tearing his ACL, he restructured his deal. So he kind of got built out on that. You know, I, I just think Herney overall just likes to give that money away, man. Yes. It's, it's, it's too much. Spinning sprees. Yeah. That's, that's the and problem, that's- man. So he, he, so, um, so I guess, so just to kind of wrap up, not wrap up, but just to kind of, and where where his his uh, tenure ended, um, we were sixteen million dollars over the cap uh, when Gettleman took over in two thousand thirteen. Um, the dude was irresponsible when it came to money, and he he paid guys um, because you know I, I, I'm not gonna say why he paid them, but he paid them um, because they were key in what we did. But you got to be smart about it when you pay him. You can't just hand out these big extensions like he was doing. Um so I don't know, that's what that's what worries me. And and so and this is this is what uh confuses me about why Gettleman was fired and uh, has me worried about who's gonna take over. Because you can't they're they're polar opposites. Was the hard nosed guy to keep straight to your face, to keep it real, one hundred, this is the way it is, this is how we're gonna do it. And it was successful. Got us way under the cap. Um, everything was good. And then you got the polar opposite and Herney. That's just you get a you get a boat. You get a boat. We all get boats. <laughs> Oprah. Uh, everybody's getting extensions, um, and you can't do it that way. He's, and he said he realizes his uh, his mistakes, and and one can only hope um, that um, he he really did because. We can't go back to that. Um, and it looks like we're actually kind of close to that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, but go ahead. Well, the the thing that got Gettleman gone was, is, and we talked about it last week, he wasn't really like a people person like that. Like he was always fo- he was always focused on boss, that film man. game. But he was still He's always boss, focused man. on that film game. And it you worked. know, our, our, owner, our owner is about the people, man. And so when he saw what happened, when we saw what happened with the Norman situation, you saw what happened, how Steve Smith got got the boot. He saw that there was issues trying to get um, Thomas okay. Davis and Olsen signed. Owner had enough, man. All I'm saying is you can't have it both ways. You, well, you, can't. you, you can't have it both ways. But you, you, can't got, have you, it, you can't have it extreme on either side either. Yeah, it, it, true. That, I mean, that's and that's what we're going to have to find. You're going to have yeah. to find somebody that's – Tough but fair at the same time, and I thought that's what Gettleman was. And but I guess outside, from the outside looking in, you know, he was a hard. hard uh, or, I'm sorry, on the inside that people didn't know he was he was a hard ass, and um, that's just the way it was. Because everybody, I mean, we, like, we don't we don't have access to all that information, but apparently that nobody really liked him like that. All the articles that I read was basically saying that when it came to like getting players and scouting players. He was one of the best in the NFL to do it. But then when it came to dealing with people, that was a struggle. And when you're a general manager, that's one thing you're going to have to deal with is people. And I think that was his downfall. I think when, it's a, well, I it, think when it, the success is there, you can, look over, you can look over the fact that he couldn't deal with people. But then once that success wanes, goes away, you know, those are the breaks. And some people are saying they didn't like the way he handled the situation with Josh and how he – did that now? Granted, we ended up getting James Bradbury out of the equation, but it kind of left us ill prepared coming after Super Bowl season that we were starting two rookie corners. So I think that could have been a factor as well. But he he set us up for the future from that standpoint because I think Bradbury is going to be an All Pro. Yeah, he, yeah, Bradbury is going to be a beast. Um, it's he it's a couple guy hit. 
his his later rounds were successful, more successful than his his first round picks. And we gotta again, if we're gonna be talk about what we need, we need that guy that's gonna be able to uh, draft. I mean, nobody again, nobody's perfect, right? So nobody's gonna have a perfect draft. Um, so, but we need that that person uh, that that can kind of read between the lines of some of this stuff because it's it's tough. I mean, you you just got you just got a guy fired that got us way under the cap. Um, was doing the right things and, and from the, from the outside looking in, but you know I don't know, man. It's it's gonna be tough to find somebody that that's that's like a unicorn. Um, <laughs> to find somebody that that's the perfect mixture of the two, uh, because I thought well, everything I thought everything that was I thought everything was going well, man. But you know, then this the Olsen and, and TD extension thing came out, and, and I, again I said this last last uh, episode, but I think it sets a bad precedent. Um, if that's really the reason, or if that even if even if that was just only the reason that or uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was. Uh, you know, TD and uh, Olsen's extensions. You you can't you can't do that. Um, you can't fire somebody just because you don't get get what you want, um, or you think these players. I mean, yeah, they they deserve it. No nobody's questioning that, but it's got to fit in the grand scheme of things. And to me, I see why. Um, again, we'll talk about that later. But I see why it it, it didn't it didn't get done, and it hasn't even been done yet. Um, but any art, any more, any more. Um, Bad. Uh, we wrapping you know, up the I bad. Get, I, I didn't. I didn't get enough bads in them. No, go ahead. Make it funny. No, no, That's no. I think I'm about. done. No, I'm actually done. No, I'm actually done. I think, I think the, the, the contracts was the big thing for me. Yeah, I think the contracts was the big thing for me. He gave away a lot of money, man. And oh my god, he did. It's you just can't you can't do. It. You gotta be responsible. <laughs> it's just it's gotta be a um a balance. Yep. Yeah, we could talk about how he never got a, a alternate to Steve Smith, never replaced Steve Smith, but at the same time, yeah, never. He never did, never. but at the same time, we might have to put some of that on my boy Smitty too, man. He he ain't exactly was an open arm type of guy. Yeah, that's true. He Smitty owned a locker room, and uh, I think there were a couple guys that could have uh, stepped up, could have stepped up, but uh, Smitty's personality is, was overbearing. That's part of the reason why he got ousted. Um, it's, it's he's again my favorite Panther of all time, but the dude was and kind of what? a jerk. And, and guess what? Hardy didn't draft him. Yeah, <laughs> it's the goat, man. Yeah, Hardy inherited him. Matter of fact, the, did Hardy draft any good wide receiver his entire tenure? Uh, I don't, I don't think anybody drafted, not until we got uh KB. That was the best drafted yeah. uh receiver we got. I can look at it. Yes. I mean, he he drafted Dwayne Jarrett. That doesn't count, right? <laughs> no, nah, nah. Dwayne Jarrett. Yeah. Dwayne Jarrett. Let me let me look at this list real quick. I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> let me see. None of these guys. Uh, Kerry, uh, Kerry Colbert, Drew Carter. Nah. Drew Carter was another one that was could have been decent. He never panned out. Um, who else? Let's see here real quick. Uh, oh, he, 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 he did draft uh, uh, Gary Barnage. Yeah. So he, got, he drafted Gary, but we never utilized him like they, like they did in Cleveland. He, he drafted Armonte, um, I guess it was converted receiver, and he drafted David Geddes too. Geddes couldn't stay on the field. It was always he on the bike. He drafted LaFell. LaFell. LaFell, yep. We got LaFell. Yeah, he tried. Honest. He tried. Yeah, and Gelman drafted Kelvin and Devin. And I think he hit it right on the head. Uh, sorry. And he drafted uh, soon to be great uh, Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel. Looks like he's yeah. going to be a beast. All right. Uh, one more thing. So uh, I happened to see a, just to wrap up the uh, Herney conversation, I happened to see. Um, an interview. Uh, he was interviewing with Fox News, I guess, shortly after his uh his hiring, and um, <laughs> he said he had a meeting, a short meeting about the cap, and found out that uh, we quote 
might be over in 18, meaning we might be over the cap in 18. It's 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 not looking the cap in 2018 is not looking good, folks. I hope it, it's it's not looking good at all, <clears throat> and it, that's part of the reason. That's part of the reason why um, uh, I think Olsen and uh, and TD aren't getting done yet. It's not looking good. I'll get into details later, but it's not looking good at all. Especially when you got um, you got Noel Star out there. They about to chew up all that. TD and Greg are talking about resigning them. They about to chew all that up that that we do have. Um, but yeah, and then that didn't even include Trey's contract. And speaking of Trey, Herney comes in. What does he do? Apparently, it was already in the works. But he um he extended uh Trey Turner. What's your, what's your thoughts? Initial thoughts on his uh his contract. Trey earned it. But he might be part of the reason why we're gonna be over the cap in twenty eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> it, it depends how it's structured. Yeah, it could be backloaded. It could be it's backloaded. True. So I mean there's there's ways to play around with it. Um so and that, those numbers, the yearly numbers haven't come out yet either. So we don't really know <clears throat> what it is on a it's a yearly breakdown yet. So we it's it's cool. For he, now. I'm, I'm glad we locked them up, but now I'm worried about what's gonna happen with the cap. And now we we've we just signed KK, we got trade signed. So I think that's a safe bet that Star is not going to make it back unless yeah that Star is night night. It's there's no way it's happening. Looking at the cap, unless he's willing to take like a huge discount, it's not happening. Star would not be a Panther uh, next season. Um, it, it's it's going to be extremely tough. Um, I'd rather honestly I'd rather lock up Norwell and let Star walk because we got Big Vern and we could probably draft another DT at some point. Um, I'm just nervous because I'm just nervous because we haven't seen enough of Vern because Vern was hurt last year. So I'm, I'm get, oh Vern's gonna break you out this year, buddy. He's gonna have <laughs> it's, to. It's, hap- it's happening this year. If he doesn't, it's man. Happening. So let, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's dive a little bit more into uh, Trey's uh, contract. He got a four-year, forty-five million dollar deal uh, with twenty point five guaranteed. Um, the eleven. Uh, and a quarter million per year average makes him the third highest paid guard um, behind Cleveland's uh, Kevin Zettler, or Zietler, who was making $12 million in Oakland's uh, uh, Kelichi Kel- Osimile. He's making $11.7 uh, mil per year. Uh, when his con- Obviously, when his contract is over, he's, gonna, he's only going to be 28. So he's going to get paid. There's enough room for him to get paid twice. Uh, whoever his his agent was is a genius. His genius, his uh, agent needs a bonus because not too many people get two paydays. Because he's going to be still in his prime at twenty eight. Yeah, man, he's going to be balling. Um, so apparently, just to wrap, but I guess just to finish my points here, um, apparently the deal was in place uh, before uh, Gettleman was fired. So apparently they were working on it. Um. Yeah, so his yeah his agent is a beast because um he definitely uh negotiated the hell out of that. Drew Rosenhaus, according to my buddy Marcus. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that in chat. Um, so, yeah, he, Drew's he an animal, that. man. He he couldn't get Greg paid though, isn't he? Greg's uh Greg's agent. Think so. Think so. Yeah. So I guess it's just Trey specifically, but um, but yeah, Trey Trey got. Trey got uh he got he got um broke off something nice. He deserves it. He deserves it. Two time Pro Bowler in three years. That's that's awesome. Yeah. So he definitely deserves to get his money. I'm not knocking the I'm not knocking the deal. I just know that we pay K Wan a lot of money. We pay Trey. We paying Trey a lot of money. Cap ain't unlimited, man. This ain't the NBA. So yeah. Now it, it, you see, it's gonna start tighten, tightening up because next year is it's rough. Next year, it's pretty bad. So now, now I'm about to play devil's advocate a little bit. Now that Herney's here, could you just could you see Cam holding out? Not this year, but the following year if he has a good year. No, I actually I think the, a way to alleviate the cap is to extend Cam another couple of years and try to spread his money out. Um, 
that's what I that's what I would go to look look to uh, kind of alleviate some cap. I don't see Cam holding now. He I don't think money's the issue with Cam. Um, there's a couple other people probably like Greg, uh, but I don't see Cam. I don't see Cam holding now. He's a leader too. I, I that that would be a bad a bad precedent to set. So I don't think him specifically. Maybe other people. Probably gonna be some cuts. Some cuts happening. Some of your favorite Panthers probably gonna be catching L's. Uh, but it's it's uh, rough next the, year. Folks in the chat are talking like, "Well, man, Cam got paid." And I'm like, "Yeah, Cam got paid. That was before he was an MVP of the freaking NFL." Yeah, he he got paid. Yeah. He's he's underpaid by Olsen standards. If we're if, if we're saying we're Olsen, Cam is definitely underpaid um, yeah. on it. On a he's he's like the seventh, I think, seventh highest paid quarterback. And by the and, end of the um, year, it might be tenth. Like, because I guess. Freaking Kirk Cousins lost his mind not taking the contract extension that he had to get an opportunity to have. So you he could you could easily see Cam potentially fall out of the top ten and pay quarterbacks. I mean, but that that I mean that happens though. I mean, yep. you can't expect to always be the highest paid player. It happens, and some people do hold out, and some people don't. Uh, but I think Cam, with his endorsements and all that stuff in place, some of those other guys don't have it like Cam. I mean, Cam probably has what a lifetime Under Armour deal. Just talking out my ass. I don't. I don't know if he has one, but I'm. He's got enough. He's got enough Okios Okios commercials to go around. He's he's just fine. Cam is good. I don't think he. I don't think he'll be complaining about money. <clears throat> um, I'm checking out. This, I'm checking out the chat, man. I'm addicted to this chat. Yo, the Butler, the the Butler pick is gonna look like the most best best move Getterman did. No, nah, it's KK. His second round KK pick was the best move he did. Yeah, but that was I'm genius. Talk, I'm talking about after drafting KK and Star, and the foresight to freaking grab Butler, knowing that one of those guys. Oh was yeah, to go so that's Gettleman was good, man. That was, Gettleman was straight, man. So um, let's let's see, uh, let's let's kind of continue along here. So any any more uh, news on or any more uh, any thoughts on uh, Trey Turner? Nah, we we good on Trey. Trey earned it. Yeah, he earned it. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm, it's time. It's time we get that O line in place. A lot of money going on the O line, though. <laughs> the left tackles is is overpaid. Trey is debatable whether he's overpaid. I think he. I think his contract is just right. Um, it depends, man. Because guards surely don't make this type of money, man. Guards are getting paid as much as tackles. Yeah, it's pretty important until you don't have one. Yeah. Yeah, but man, man. Yeah, so bottle. So if, if Getterman is going to get the credit for this contract, we're going to have to talk about how Getterman might have potentially overpaid two offensive linemen, though. Uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be revisiting that Khalil contract because if this dude don't make the Pro Bowl, then we we going to have some issues. He 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 can't give up any sacks. <laughs> like, no. he's, he's paid. He paid him a lot of money, man. But I but I do I will say this. I think it's a. Uh, a cut friendly deal, meaning he can be cut. I think year two makes it makes him a safe cut. So I think it was structured well enough to where uh, we can cut him without too much penalty. Um, so I got to look deeper in the numbers there, but I, I do think it's a, a cut friendly deal. Um, yeah. Plum of saying it's two year, 24 mil. So. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, it's essentially a two year deal. Um, talking about uh Khalil. Uh so he's got two years to prove it, but we don't have time for that. We need him to be great this year. Um so speaking of O line, uh, Mike Orr was uh was cut or released um after the 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 drama's now over. Um you know dude hope I hope I you know give him all the best wishes uh but he, he need to get his mind right uh, something ain't right upstairs, man. Um, and we we did save one point six million in the cap by by cutting or. I tell you what, man, he failed his physical, so you knew that was it for him. Yeah, we talked about that um, a couple episodes back. We knew the timeline was going to happen. I believe I said it um, that if uh, you know the physical was going to come late July, if he failed that physical, it was over. Um, if he passed it, he would have played 
but we all knew what it was, man. He he's got that case, and the nine one one call was released. I didn't listen to it, but um, you know, hopefully he can get it right. Uh, I think his career is probably over at this point. I uh, don't kind of don't want to see him on the field with his his head. That dude, he got to make sure his brain right. Um, so any any other thoughts on uh on Ower? Thirty for thirty. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. It's, it's definitely going to have one. Uh, oh, my God. The highs from the highs to the highs to the lows of the lows, bro. It's all in there. Yeah. The movie, 30 for 30. The Super Bowl. You ain't going to see that Super Bowl win, right? You got to ring with the Ravens. Yeah, with the Ravens. Yeah. Man, he's, yeah. That's definitely going to be a 30 for 30. 30 for 30. All right. So let, let's done with um. We're done with Mr. Orr. Wish him all the best, man. And, uh, so, on to um, Mr. Rivera talking about Cam Newton. Um, they asked Cam Newton uh, if he. They, oh, I'm sorry. They asked uh, Ron, Coach Ron, about uh, Cam. Asked him was he 100 percent, and he said, "Quote, I wouldn't say that, uh, but he and the running backs and the tight ends and the receivers went up to Baltimore to do their getaway and work out for a couple of days, and they threw it around." And I know he's been throwing it. I'm not sure how much he's going to throw. Uh, he's talking to the trainers about what he should be. Uh, I'm, I'm just pleased that there's an opportunity for him to start off and start off on the right foot. So what does that sound like to me? Sounds like a pitch count. Mm, yeah, man. That's not <laughs> what we thought. Uh, it's not. I don't know, man. A little worrisome there. A little worrisome. Not yet. I want. I. I don't want to be worried. Where's yet, the little man. kid at, man? What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> him on. Where he at, man? How old is he now? He should be in college by now. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to pull him up. Cause uh. He need to loosen that arm up, cause I don't know, man. This ain't this ain't good. Man, we got DA, man. I don't know, man. <clears throat> he, but I will say he he does look good though. Yeah, you see, did you see the picture of him? Pause. Yeah, he, he lost he looked, weight, man. He lost weight, man. He he looks good, dude. So does that mean he a quicker? Like, does that look a quicker cam? No, nah, that means a guy that. That can't be taking all them hits that he's been taking. <laughs> a guy that's going to be staying in that pocket, and he will be quicker to get out of the pocket. But I, like I, like I said earlier this year, this year he's not going to be running around and taking these hits like he used to. Yeah, because he, keep, he keeps losing all his weight, man. How much he weighing now? Two thirty, two thirty five. I don't know. He look. He probably two thirty. Sound about right. Yeah, so he looked good though, man. It's just that shoulder is con- kind of concerning, man. I don't know how it's gonna how that's gonna be. Uh, hopefully he's healthy and he doesn't play in the preseason. <laughs> now he's got to play at least one game. Nah, just, yeah, no, nah, he's. I know, I know, I know he's gonna play. I just mess around. But yeah, now nah, that but that definitely sounds like he's gonna be on a snap count at uh at training camp. He won't be throwing a lot, which is kind of concerning. But at least he's not. I think what Andrew Luck they said he might not even. Might even throw in training camp, I believe. It was a report a while back about whether he was gonna um he was gonna play in uh training camp or throw. So at least that's pretty positive. Um a positive vibe about that. So I don't know, not no, no breaking news here. Um they just it just sounds like a, a, a snap count, but at least like I said, at least he's out there throwing. It doesn't sound like he had any setbacks, so no, no, it it, it doesn't, but He's throwing, so he's throwing right now, which is always and like like Rivera said, it's a step in the right uh, direction. So let's let's just hope everything uh, stays healthy and it looks good. So, um, it, there any more thoughts on Cam? Good on that. Your prediction still stands, right? Which one about the forty-five? Did I say forty-five hundred, or did I pull it back? You pulled it back. Yeah, you you knew. 40, I think I said. At I least think I said forty-two. 42. I think I said forty-two, right? Yeah, we gotta check the check the beautiful bean footage. Yeah, but. yeah, we gotta roll back, roll that back. But I believe I said forty-two. All right. I might have said four thousand. I don't know. 
But I, I'm st- I still think it's gonna be up there. All right. Still, you whatever be I said right now, man. Whatever I said still stands until until further notice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what that was, but um, nah, we'll, maybe we'll somebody in, in the chat though. But um, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so that's 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 it on Cam. So speaking of Cam, him and his buddy, you see the pictures of him throwing uh throwing Greg Olson. Oh, the bro, the throw man, yeah, the, the throw man's pick. Yeah, man. So speaking of Greg, it looks like he's uh, not holding out and will be a training camp. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. We need that uh, continuity, man. We can't afford any more bumps in the road at this point. We need all systems to go right now. So it's it's good to have him out there, man. Um, I still think it'll be under a thousand. That still stands as well. But I'm just happy to happy that he's out there. He disagrees with you. Who? Greg. Who disagrees? Gregory Olson. Oh, yeah. No, he, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I, I, I hope he goes out and does, does a thousand yards again, but I want to see some other people shine too. Um, but yeah, man. So um, what else? What else we got? Oh, uh, your boy, um, Herney made a, a front office move. He um, finds somebody. Yeah, he fired uh, Mark Kantz. Um He was the pro uh, pro scouting director uh, since 2000, and uh, he was promoted to director of player personnel uh, by G uh, by uh, Dave Gettleman in May. So he's out of there, <clears throat> it, which is weird. Like that guy was he was around when Herney was around. So why? I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to take a demotion. Yeah, but he but, just got in which May. Is fun- I know that's what I'm saying. Maybe he didn't want to go back to his old position. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. This is front office move, so I have no intel about what's going on. But um, you would think uh, if if Herney was interim, he wouldn't be making a move like this. Yeah, so that's what makes me. It. Yeah, that's what makes me think it's going to be a full time uh, role. These aren't these once. these aren't interim GM moves that he's doing right now. Yeah, they're not. And the other thing you got to consider too, like I think the Panthers might not have to do the Rooney rule if they decide to just make him the full GM. Yeah, they got. I mean, they're gonna have to. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna have to go through the whole process. They might not have to. They um, might not have to. I read somewhere there's a that that possibly if they make the decision to make him the full GM. They might not have to do the Rooney rule. They might not have to, or it'll be pointless at that point. So interesting. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we did. Somebody put it in the chat. We did sign uh, Trevor Graham. He's a camp body. I don't. I don't expect him to see any significant snaps. I don't know why they signed another receiver either. I have no idea. It made zero sense to me. But we had the open spot because of Michael Orr, so they filled it. That's pretty much it. Charles Johnson camp still hurt. Body. See, uh, that's a good question. It could be. That's a good question. That's a great question. It could be the reason. That might be the reason. CJ, the CJ, the new CJ, he can't, he can't be hurt because it's too much competition out there. And I'm telling you, uh, keep an eye on Austin Duke. That's who I'm watching. Uh, this, this, uh, this training camp, Austin Duke, man, he's gonna be a beast. Him and Demir Bird um, are the guys. If uh, Charles Johnson, the, the receiver, isn't healthy. Um, but yeah, man, uh, that's, that's pretty much all we got, uh, uh as far as news, uh, you need to move on to, um, training camp, training camp stuff, man. It's going to be good camp. times, man. Do's and don'ts, man. Training camp do's and don'ts. How about that, man? What's, what you got, man? Has that in the chat? I mean, have y'all, have y'all been to training camp before? Who, who Who's going to training camp this year? Probably gonna take it probably a little while, a little behind us. But. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll let them catch up. We just want to know if any of you guys ever been to Panthers training camp. And I, to answer your question about Shepard, I think he's a lock. Yeah, Shepard is definitely a lock. To answer that question, yeah, he's definitely a lock. Jay Anderson's going. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, we'll be. I'm, I'm gonna be out there. Um, I'm on, I'm gonna be out there uh, Wednesday, and depending on the weather, because it looks like it's gonna rain Thursday morning, which is when practice is. They could flex it out and move it. It's happened before. Um, What's going to move on Monday? Yeah, they could do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, um, so I'm definitely gonna be out there Wednesday. I'm gonna, I plan on going Thursday. I don't know about Friday yet, and we're gonna be out there Saturday and Sunday, yeah. uh, both of us. So Dave will be there Saturday. Yep. Uh, and we'll both be there on Sunday as well. So, yeah. so yeah, man. Uh, so as far as uh, opening opening day man it used to actually be on a friday um and it used to be like a well it's probably still gonna be like a big party they have like bands and food trucks and drinks and all kinds of stuff but uh since i don't know how they're gonna do it they've been moving it inching it forward every year like i think last year was on a thursday and then this year it's on a wednesday and i think they're trying to limit the crowd um I, that's just the only only thing i got or reasoning as to why they would do that, um, because last year was cr- last year was bananas. It was crazy out there last year. You see, I didn't go last um, year, so I, it was crazy. I, the the, was the crazy. most people. What well, was after the Super Bowl too? Yeah, it was after the Super Bowl, right? So it was crazy. It was bananas. That's why I think they keep moving it up is to try to limit um, limit the crowd. Uh, but as far as opening day, uh, couple you got you got any do's and don'ts as far? Oh, yeah, I mean you've been to one. Obviously, you just didn't go last yeah. year. Yeah, we been used to go all the time. Yeah, so, so um, my biggest thing about training camp, opening day or any day, any day, you want to get there early. You need to get there early. Um, for opening day, they do it at Gibbs Stadium, which is the stadium for Waffle College. You want to try to get to the front, to the front, the front row, and you want to try to hang your jerseys there. So when the players come by, they'll sign them after practice. Uh, I The biggest thing that you shouldn't do is bother the players while they're practicing. They're doing their job. Let them do their job. They sign autographs after practice. I don't know. That's that's a debatable don't. Well, at Gibbs, they, they don't. Only, at Gibbs, they typically don't do it until after practice. 99% of them don't do it unless they're hurt. Yeah, no, yet, you're, you're asking. No, you're abs- you're absolutely right about it. none of them was signed during practice. But what we what, I know what I did last year, um, a bunch of people were, that were with me, we were screaming like their names um, to kind of get their attention because we had their we had the jerseys hung up, and like we were like, hey, yeah, look at you know, come sign our jerseys after practice, and uh, and they did. Um, so like, it's debatable. I mean, screaming their name, I, I, it's not a, a terrible thing to do uh, to kind of get their attention to tell them to come over, but. Gibbs is a is a tough place um, to get autographs um, because simply because the players don't have to walk past you. Well, they do, and if you have like a VIP pass, um, they don't have to walk past you. Uh, they just kind of just go in and out as they as they please. So it's 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 uh it's tough to um to get autographs there. Um, but the days after, um, like when it's at the practice field. Uh, you definitely got to get there early. Yes. Sir. Uh, yeah, you got to get there. Early. And I and I suggest one do I suggest is go in in <laughs> in teams. Uh, you need a you need a partner to go with you, um, or at least some friends out there uh, that'll kind of save your spot because uh, it it gets bananas out there. Um, as, as far as getting autographs, that's what main reason why I go. I really don't watch practice like that. Um, I kind of catch the highlights. Uh, off Twitter and stuff like that. I, I will watch practice at Gibbs because obviously that's you're in a stadium setting, so it's easier to see. But when you go to training, when you go to um, the other practices that are on the practice field, there's there's a little hill you can sit on, which is cool. On um, that hill, kind of fills up, but the autograph uh, area is like way. It's like a hundred, a whole football field um, down off to the right, uh, and it's it gets super crowded down there because that's where all the autographs, when the players come out, they literally walk right past you. So it's real easy to get them on the way out and on the way back to the locker room when they're done. 
Um, so that's, you know, but you got to get there really early to get, like, if, for instance, on Wednesday, uh, I'm going to get out there around, practice starts at, well, practice doesn't start to 6.30, I think, but the, they do the opening ceremony at 4, I believe. And uh, I'm going to get there probably like noon just to get my spot. Probably be the first person or second, maybe top five people in line. Uh, just so I can get my spot down in the, in the first row, like Dave was saying. Um, so, yep. What up? Any any other any other things you got? When it comes to the kids, <laughs> don't push the kids. I know that's going to be hard for you guys, and you'll see if you ever show if you ever been to training camp. But you don't want to push the kids. You know they're going to take precedence over us because we're most of us. I'm assuming are here. They're adults. So don't. Don't be pushing the kids, man. The kids are there to get the autographs. Yeah, so. but at the same time, those kids can be quite rude. They are. Um, some, of them very, on, some of them don't have some of them don't have home training. Yeah, some of them are quite rude. So you just gotta kind of stay in your ground. That's why I say it's best to go in pairs because if you want to go to the bathroom, something like that, you can just you can kind of say, you know, hold my spot. I'll go to the bathroom or whatever. Um, cause it, it gets crazy. Like when Cam comes, like it's like a big rush of people trying to get his autograph and he doesn't sign much. Um, the most, the uh, last year was the most I've ever seen him sign, sign. Um, he signed a lot of autographs last year, the first night it was Wednesday night or Thursday night, open night. And uh, he signed a lot of stuff. I don't know if he's hit or miss cause it's, it's, it's really about the way he feels. Sometimes he just don't be feeling it. Yeah. And, um, and so last year he signed a lot. That's when I got the MVP cleat sign, uh, which was a dope experience, and ended up on the Panthers website. It's pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Did I yeah, like that? It was it was very yeah. It was, that was the only day I, I think that was the only day I went because I got those 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 cleat signed, and that was all I needed. I really didn't. I didn't do any helmets. It was just those cleats. That's all I had. Um, but so this year, that I say that to say I got a lot of jerseys to make up. Cause I didn't get, um, I didn't get any last year. So I, I got a ton of jerseys to sign this year. Yeah, you got. Yeah, don't forget to bring mine, man. In the bag. All right, I guess. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> but yeah, um, what else I was gonna say? Oh, so as far as getting autographs, I don't know how many people in here are, um, you know, uh, autograph getters, um, but it's best to have something that's personal, um. Like a, like a jersey, something with their name on it. They like signing stuff like that. Um, just getting them to sign a football is quite difficult. I mean, they'll sign it. I, I, if you're there, obviously, you're right there. But to get their attention, to get them in the area, obviously having like a jersey or something, like a piece of art. Like one dude a couple years ago had like a painting, a Cam Newton painting, and Cam signed it. Like he will sign stuff like that. Cam likes that, 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 uh, unique stuff like the cleats like when he signed like he signed both of the cleats like i wasn't expecting him to sign i thought he was just gonna sign one but he turned around and um uh turn around and signed to both but uh but yeah i just you know i don't know I, i'm i'm a huge autograph guy i like getting autographs so it's, it's fun i like to keep the cave stocked with a bunch of autographs but yeah and if you're trying to get them get there early if not you can just casually come in whenever this it's really not too last year was packed um, but it's not, I mean, that hill is pretty big, um, at the practice field, uh, in day. So you can, it's not, it's pretty cool. Um, anything else you got? Yeah. I just saw somebody said that they, um, have an eight and a 10 year old brother and the guy said, bring them. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you probably want to bring your kids. I, I, I wouldn't bring mine daughters, and I'm not. Because it, it gets too hectic, it gets crazy. But if they're big, old enough to, uh, as far as you know, because it, it gets rough, especially if you're down there by, um, by that corner. Um, during uh, the other practices, that corner gets real crazy. Like people start stepping on your stuff and trampling people. It, especially when Cam comes around, it gets tough. So I've gotten Cam's autograph like three, four times. Yeah, I got it three times. Um, yeah, so like I'm, I'm not really interested. Well, I would take autograph, obviously, but it's you know it's not on my priority list. 
Yes, it's hot. <laughs> it oh yeah, hot. yeah, it's hot. Yes, it's it's real hot. Um, I think it's actually gonna be in the 80s on Wednesday, so it's not gonna be too bad. But yeah, you're definitely gonna need some ice. Well, I think you can take coolers unless they change the rule. You could take like a mini cooler, uh, free some free some uh some water. Uh, you're gonna need lots of water because it's hot. It is hot in Spartanburg. Light clothes, some dry fit stuff. Um, it, it's definitely hot. And uh, I have to go ahead. I think with regards to the what? No, nah, I lost my train of thought. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say bring a poncho too. If you got ponchos, because this pack one, because it it's the it gets freaky with the weather sometimes. You never know. Um, so bring a poncho. Stay dry. I think there's a CVS not too far. So yeah, that's where we went and got one one year. Yeah. Um, so now I remember what I was going to say. There's an update a list of what's not allowed, and I don't think I know we used to get a tent or like a a little mini. We definitely got chairs. I think one year yeah. we got. Did we do a tent one year or something? We got a tent one year and, and return. No, we didn't use it, and I think we returned it. You got it from Walmart. Yeah, and we returned. I don't think we set it up. We may have, yeah, we, we, we may or may not have. Yeah, so like we got big lots. What did we have from big lots? Yeah, yeah. So the tent, the tent game. It looks like those might not be allowed. I saw a list okay. saying that you know they might not be allowed to go around. I got to double check. The tents might not be allowed. Um, you probably need to bring like an umbrella or something. There's a good, there's a a nice tree um, that you can get shade from uh, at the practice, like on the. The autograph near the autograph section. There's a nice tree there, but you probably want to bring like an umbrella or something to kind of keep you away from the heat. Because I mean that that sun is crazy and it's hot. It beats on you, man. It drains you, and you're literally sitting out there for two years. I meant two years. I meant two two hours. Sorry. Um. So it's it's tough. Stay hydrated. Propel. Uh, Gatorade, Powerade, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think they they sell alcohol on the on the on the first day. I don't think they sell yep. alcohol any other days. No, nah, not any other day. It's just that first time, that first yeah. day. They, they the opening it. day, they they sell alcohol. But, I mean, people people. I think you can take it in though. They, they, they if you have, if you have a cooler, you can take it in. I don't think there's anything against. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I but I have seen people drinking in there, so I don't know how to you know. But they do look in your bags and stuff, so. Check the list. I, I'm, don't quote me on that. Um, let me see. What else we got? Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. I'm excited. Any anybody you watching for training camp? Who, who's your eye on? I'm looking, I want to see the receivers. Yeah, receivers is gonna be dope. Yeah, receivers is gonna be a dope. You, somebody's gonna get cut. <laughs> yeah, somebody's gonna get cut, man. Yeah, receivers is the position I'm my main focus. Receivers, everything else. Like, I mean, maybe the right tackle position might be a nice battle. I think Motown's gonna get it, but Darrell Williams could win it. Especially now since um since um Orr's officially been released. So the right tackle position will definitely be interesting to say the least. I'm ready to see that D line, man. It's gonna be feasting season, bro. Our D line is gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. So I feel sorry for Matt and the rest of them dudes. Cause it's gonna be which running back? Which running back gets cut? Cap. Cap. Cap is about to be out of there. I was gonna say, man, I wouldn't be surprised if Herney tried to bring back D. Will on a on a vet vet minimum deal. It was very minimum cap and Fozzie gone. He he oh hey, matter of fact, D will owe us. He should give us a free season for all the money he he got from Herney. He owe Herney a favor. He should, man. My God, he should. There's a couple players that need favor that that Herney <laughs> favors. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Beeson, all them dudes need to come back. They owe us some favors. Ain't enough room for Beeson no way, but uh. Anything else? Anything else you got, man? I'm good, man. I'm I'm chilling. I gotta yeah. I gotta get this rental car. <laughs> That's what yeah, I gotta man. do. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I can't wait. 
Uh, so I always get signed in camp, get those autographs. I think I got about eight or nine jerseys I got to get signed. I believe. You got a mission. All yeah, right, I got gonna, a mission, man. I'm going to go through the, I'm going through these chats real quick. Elder or Sanchez Elder. Elder's making the team. Sanchez isn't. I don't know about that, man. I think it's – I don't think it's between those two. I think it's between Teddy Williams and Sanchez. I'm still t- – I'm taking Teddy. Sanchez should try yeah. to learn how to play – Sanchez should try to learn how to play safety. I mean, I don't think that's his. Because <laughs> I don't really think that's it. really his call. I don't think that's his call. I, don't, I mean, yeah, he got a he got a bulk yeah, up a I little mean, bit, and he's got to learn how to hit. Yeah, I don't think that's his call. I think you know. What else you got? Who else? Any other um, chat questions? Looking through. What y'all got, guys? Let me see if there's anything somebody asked earlier that I missed. Chat popping a day, man. Yeah, it's kind of lit in there. It was quiet early. I know folks wanted to talk about the right tackle battle. I think Motown's going to win that job. I don't. Daryl got it until further notice. Daryl earned it, man. He's got the experience. He's good. I don't know if Worley's big enough to play safety, man. Well, he might be. He's six feet tall. Yeah, no, I think we're really, I think we're really straight. Uh, I, but yeah, the safety position sucks. That's my only concern. I'm, I think uh, Herney brings somebody in. Um, I, I, I agree with uh, Jerome there. I, I think Moten will. He probably will get it at some point. <laughs> um, but it's not. It's not. It's gonna be Darren Williams out the jump. I don't think they're gonna do that much read option with McCaffrey and Newton, man. I think that's going to be more about the short pass. I don't think there's going to be too much read option stuff with McCaffrey. Yeah, I think yeah, McCaffrey's going to get a lot of his stuff on the on the dump off. I think it's going to be a lot of design routes for him out the backfield, and he's going to shake some guy. It's going to be that that that's the battle you should be watching. Luke versus McCaffrey when McCaffrey linebacker any linebacker versus McCaffrey can they keep up with him? Because if our athletic linebackers can't keep up with, up with them, then nobody can. That's true. That is true. We have some of the we have some of the most athletic linebackers there are in the game, and if they can't keep up with McCaffrey, oh, it's gonna be lights out. <laughs> so that's gonna be the battle. That's gonna be the battle I'm watching: McCaffrey versus the linebackers. Can he out out maneuver those guys? Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to walk and check a practice out. I'm hoping that I do get on the autographs on Saturday so I can check out, sit down, and watch some of the practice on Sunday. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, it's a good good, um, good thought. All, for all those people that's not going to training camp, make sure y'all go follow the uh, Facebook page. I'm going to be streaming practice live as much as my GoPro will allow me. Um, I got mad batteries, but the GoPro battery life is terrible. So I'm going to record as much practice as I can. I'm going to stream it live. If I figure it out, I'll do it to YouTube. But I don't know how to stream live from my GoPro to YouTube. I'll upload the video to YouTube later. But if you want to see it live, make sure you go follow the Facebook page, Panther Nation Podcast. Go do it right now because you're going to be left out if you don't. It's gonna be dope. Cause I'm gonna be watching. I'm exactly. Not gonna be <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what yeah. time is that for? That right? four? It starts at four. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get the opening ceremony and whatnot. You know they do the mayor thing, and all that. I, I think the cheerleaders are gonna do something. Um, a couple others. Um, but yeah, go go like the page. Shout out to Jerome. He just liked it. I got the notification. Uh, yep, sure. I saw the notification. Yeah. So y'all keep yo. He's he's a good listener. So go Brandon follow the Facebook page. Yeah, shout out to y'all, man. Go follow it, cause it's gonna be lit. And I'm gonna try to get. I'm gonna try to get. Uh, if I can grab the autographs, I try to show y'all me getting the autographs too. Um, just the too many people around my camera like that, and it depends if my clamp can fit. So we'll we'll see how it goes. What kind of what kind yeah. of batteries that GoPro takes? Is there a way to like yeah, it's, it's a lithium? It, it's a lit. I got three of. I got three batteries, but it's. It they, they don't last long. Now I was I wondering get, because because like, you I know get I, like two, three more. I do all the concerts and I record the shows and stuff, so I always use my phone and 
Yeah, if I, if I can't portable charger action. Yeah, I do it from my phone if I can. Um, but I bought my GoPro and I don't have to sit there and hold my GoPro. I can just prop prop it. I got the clamps and stuff. I just prop it up and let it ride. Awesome. So um, I'm I want to do it from the GoPro. Uh, I can do it from Facebook to Facebook Live or Periscope, but I can't do it from um, from GoPro. So unless I figure it out between now and then. So um, but yeah, go like the Facebook page. I'm gonna be streaming streaming. See about him. Okay. Oh yeah, McCaffrey can play wide receiver, dude. He can play. Wide. Yeah, he can play slot. He can play slot. He should. Don't be surprised. You see him motion out to the slot a couple of times. Let's see. We live every Monday at nine, man. Every Monday at nine o'clock, we here. Unless unless you get the notification from the Facebook page, which I'm telling you, you go follow. I try to. You know, if if any news comes up, we um we might we'll, we'll we might need to in. we might need to move it next week though. What's next week? Because the training camp. Oh yeah. Oh, we might. I mean, we might do shows every every day. Yeah. I might do. Yeah, I might hop on. So we might not. We may or may not have one next week. Um, but I'm we gonna have a lot of shows. Um, or a lot of clips. There's gonna be a lot of uploads. A lot of stuff going on the channel. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't know about Friday yet, because I don't know if I'm going Friday. But it's gonna be a lot of uploads. We probably should do a live joint Sunday. Yeah, we're gonna do a lot. Yeah, we're gonna do a live joint um Saturday or Sunday. Yo, just yo, just follow us, man. All the announcements, Twitter, Facebook, social media, all that stuff. Go follow, man. Shout out to all the loyal people. Um, shout out to what's his name? Cause my man, uh Slim J5, five Slim J513, man. Shout out to you, man, because you always be in here. He sure is. Yeah. So right, I'm gonna ask a question. Team. I'm gonna ask a question to you guys, man. I know we did fantasy earlier a few episodes back. Since we're getting closer and the preseason's coming up, do you want to talk fantasy? Do you want to do more content on fantasy from a Panthers perspective? And do you want to do a league? And we're definitely doing a league. I'm gonna <laughs> set that league up soon. All right, all right. Yes to the league, or yes, to, yes to both. Okay. All yeah, right. we we definitely gonna do a league. We're gonna do a league. Yeah, I know Plymouth, so I know. Hey, all right, Slim Slim J five thirteen. I might I might get some. I might I might get some for you, bro. You you because you say you Ohio State fan. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna look out for you. I got some. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hook you up. We gonna we gonna link up. I'm gonna hook you up with something. Any other Ohio State fans in here? Cause we got mad Ohio State people on our team. Sure as heck do. <laughs> All right. So I got interest. So follow the Facebook page. I'll probably either use that or the Twitter page to to get the members for the for the league. I'll donate a prize. I haven't decided what the prize is gonna be yet, but I'll donate a prize. Oh, shout out. Um, we did get 205 followers. Oh, we're up to 205 followers right now. Um, so we will be doing a giveaway at some point. Um, wait till training camp, after training camp, um, to see what kind of stuff I have. Um, but as I get stuff signed, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to bring it to y'all and show y'all um, on the group because I, I does this autograph thing. Uh, shout out to my man, Brian. I don't know if he watched it, but my man, Brian, he got the helmet hookup. He be hooking me up, he hooking us up with the helmets. I don't know if he going to training camp. Um, but shout out to Brian. He got me on autograph game, uh, us on autograph game. The first year we went. Twitter handles Panther Nation PC. I'm gonna post it. Man, if you win the contest, man, we'll ship it. <laughs> yeah, we'll ship it. We'll ship it. We'll take care of. It. else ready to close it up yeah, I, I am too oh yeah shout out to the real fullback yeah I'm, I'm happy about that too all right we yeah we about to um, roll out man we had a good show this is a good show nice long show too 
Um, so, yo, we're going to holler at y'all, man. Wednesday, it's going to be lit. You got to do what this outro says. You got to go do it. Go do For it. Culture. For the culture, man. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Panther Nation podcast hosted by Rashad and David. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Panther Nation Podcast. You can also like our Facebook page at Panther Nation Podcast. While you're at it, follow us on Twitter at Panther Nation PC. And always remember, keep pounding. Keep pounding, people, man. We'll see y'all on Wednesday, man. It's going to be a great, great, great training camp. Um, hope to see y'all out. If y'all see me out there, holler at me, man. Holler at me. I'm cool. I'm cool with dude, man. Keep pounding. I'll let y'all see y'all on Wednesday. Yeah, I'll see you guys Saturday and Sunday.